Today we're going to do something a little bit different because I did actually start recording the next episode on how to do collision detection inside Unity, but then I realized that we had something else we need to talk about. Up until now, there's been a couple of different ways that we've done movement inside Unity, for example, using the rigid body component, using the add force method, or we've done it using the transform component where we just simply did translate and rotate, which was what I showed in the previous video. And one person asked in the comments, why did we not add a rigid body 2D component to our game object when we use translate? And it just kind of got me thinking that, okay, there's something we just need to clarify here first before we continue on to the next couple of lessons, which is the difference between using physics-based movement and using a transform-based movement and also where you put that inside your code because that is going to be really important in order to not get any sort of graphical hiccups such as jittering or choppy movement. So it's just really important that we get this straight. Now you don't need to write any of this stuff that I have inside my script here, but I just want to use this as an example to just kind of like demonstrate the differences. Inside the script, I have two different ways to move my player. I can either use a rigid body based movement, which is using the physics engine inside Unity, or I can do it using the transform movement, which is just me hard coding movement into my player. These two different ways of doing things are completely different because one is using the rigid body, which is the component we add inside Unity on one of our game objects whenever we want the physics engine to just kind of like take over and decide how the physics is gonna function on our player inside the game. And of course, we can always change how it actually does things inside the rigid body component. But essentially, when you add a rigid body component onto a game object, the physics engine is just kind of like taken over. However, whenever we do any sort of transform based movement inside our code, we actually go directly inside the transform up here and manipulate these numbers up here instead of doing it using the rigid body physics component. And the reason this is very important to talk about is because if I do add a rigid body component onto a game object like I've done here, and I start doing movement inside my code that is transform based, then it can actually go in and kind of fight against the rigid body physics engine. And you can end up with some jittery movement or choppy movement or just something that behaves completely out of whack inside your game and it's just not fun to look at. So really the purpose with this video is just to kind of help you out trying to do movement inside your game correctly so you don't end up with a choppy movement or jittery movement that you then have to Google because believe me, there's not a lot of helpful answers when it comes to fixing these issues because it can be very individual what exactly your issue is. So like I said, there's two things I want to talk about. The first thing is doing rigid body versus transform movement and how that looks like inside your code so you can tell the difference. And I do also want to talk about using update and fixed update for movement. The first thing you'll notice is that I did actually categorize my code with a little comment saying this is for using rigid body and this is for using the transform. So you actually can tell the difference between the code that I have in here. Really the key thing here is for you to know that whenever we use rigid body for movement, we do actually need to grab the rigid body component inside the start method, just so that's said, because that's relevant for later. Then at the bottom here, I just simply went in and created two different methods, one for moving my player using the transform, which is not physics based. And then I created one for using it using the rigid body component, which is physics based, at least related to the physics engine inside Unity. The way you can tell the difference between using a rigid body or a transform based method inside your code is that it's going to have transform dot something, for example, transform dot translate or transform dot rotate, then it is not something that is actually affecting the physics component, which is the rigid body component inside your game object. This is just going to move your player using the transform. But if you have some code that says rigid body dot something, which is the rigid body component we grabbed inside the start method, then it is a physics based method that you're using. For example, rigid body dot velocity or rigid body dot add force. These are methods that are going to be rigid body based, which means that it does actually go in and uses the built in physics engine inside Unity. And then the question is, when do you use which one? It really depends on how you want your game to feel like, because in some cases you might want to, let's say I have a very basic platform inside my game that just moves side to side, you know, just, you know, every second or so, so the player can jump on it and then you can move with the platform. Then probably you're not going to use physics based movement for that one, because it's just very basic movement. It's not going to do anything special, but for example, for a player, you could actually go in and say, well, I want the, the physics engine to just kind of like take over and create some very quick and very smooth physics on my player that I'm then going to manipulate a little bit to get the feeling that I want. And that's totally fine. But it is actually also possible using your own code to actually create physics 
for your player if you want to hard code it in that way. A lot of people like to do that because it sort of gives you more control over creating specific physics for your player so you have like 100% control over it. But like I said again, it really depends on what kind of game that you want to make. Like if you want to just rely on the physics engine, which I like to do in a lot of cases, then you can do that. But if you want to hard code in some sort of movement, which I like to do when it comes to 3D games, at least when it comes to the player in 3D games, because it, it sort of avoids the, the whole thing about looking around and then things getting choppy because the camera can't follow correctly because of the physics and there's just some stuff that you can avoid using 3D. But really, you just got to ask yourself, do you want to use a rigid body component to create physics? If so, then probably inside your code, you should be using physics to move around your player, which means rigidbody.velocity or rigidbody.add force or rigidbody.move position or rigidbody.move rotation. There's a couple of different methods you can use using rigid body as well as using transform. So you really got to ask yourself, what, what do you want to do? What do you want to do here? Really, the important thing to note is not to mix transform and rigid body based movement together, because like I said, and create choppy movements. I had an example where I was creating something at some point where I needed a enemy to follow my player. And I did actually have the enemy follow my player using a transform based movement. Everything about the, the enemy was transform based. But I did still add a rigid body component onto the enemy because when I hit the enemy with a bullet, I wanted the enemy to just sort of fall backwards. And then after half a second, then continue to follow the player. But because I had a rigid body component onto that enemy, for some reason, after I hit the enemy, it would start getting super choppy in his movement. And I didn't understand why. And then I realized that after I hit the enemy, my rigid body wanted to continue pushing the enemy backwards. But then inside my code, my transform methods wanted the enemy to move towards the player. So the rigid body wanted the enemy to go that way, but my code wanted it to go that way. So it started fighting each other and it started getting super choppy and it just like shook all over the place and it just didn't really work out. So it's just to kind of mention here, you need to kind of like think about what you want to do when it comes to movement. Like I said, a platform that's just moving back and forward is going to be completely fine just using transform based movement. You don't have to choose rigid body movement for everything inside your game or transform movement for everything inside your game. You just need to ask yourself, what is the right usage in this particular situation here? Something that probably won't mess up your game, for example, is if your player has a rigid body based movement when it comes to moving around inside the game, but a transform based rotation to rotate the player that is probably not going to mess up anything but if you have transform based movement mixing with rigid body based movement then it's going to start fighting each other the next thing i want to talk about is update versus fixed update and what goes into which one now it is a rule of thumb that whenever you do anything physics based inside your game using code it has to go inside fixed update and that's because fixed update is going to update together with the physics engine inside Unity, which means that you do get the, the proper physics that you want to have inside your game. In this case here, it would mean that if I were to do any sort of rigid body based movement, for example, rigid body dot velocity or add force or move position or anything like that, then I do need to take that method and put it inside fixed update, which is up here. So if I were to do this and go inside my, my game that I have in the, in the background here, press play, and just sort of move around my player. Then you notice that I do have movement because it's inside the physics update and it's not doing any sort of wonky weirdness. Like I could actually just kind of untick here to make it even smoother. For some reason, I don't know why Unity keeps doing this, but whenever you have the inspector open with a lot of stats in it, it just makes the, the game more choppy. So that is also a fix, by the way. If you get choppy movement, try unselecting the inspector because that might make it smoother. Um, but if I were to go inside my code again and say, oh, I want to do transform based movements, then I need to put it inside update. And that's because transform, like I said, is not part of the physics engine. So in this case here, it would have to go inside update, but do remember that you add time that delta time inside the movement, otherwise it's gonna move based on the frame rate of your game. So it's either gonna get super fast or super slow, depending on what kind of computer you have. Uh, so by doing this and then going in and, and pressing play, you can see that we can actually move around using transform instead. It's the exact same movement, but using two different methods. However, there's also other things to kind of look out for because I do also, in some cases, might want to update some of my fields up here, you know, during runtime. So as I'm running the game, I might want to change the movement speed or something. Let's say my player gets a power up and I want to change how fast my, my player can actually move then I would actually update that inside my update method because the update methods gets run, I wouldn't say faster than fixed update because you can actually change fixed update to run at different 
rates. You can actually go inside Unity and inside the settings and tell it how often to update the physics-based movements. So it can be faster or slower than your frame rate, depending on what you set it to. So really the rule of thumb here, whenever you want to change any sort of data inside your fields, then do it inside update because it, it usually gets updated pretty fast. Another thing to kind of watch out for is input movement, because you will actually notice that in this case here, using the rigid body movement, I'm still even though I'm using rigid body, which is physics-based movement, separating the input from the actual movement code and putting the input inside update and putting the movement code inside fixed update. This is a very important separation because if you put your movement input code inside fixed update together with your physics movement, then it can actually skip key presses on your keyboard and may not register at some point that you're pressing something. So it's very important that you put the input code inside updates. You can actually see here that inside my rigid body based movements, I don't have any sort of input. I took it out and I put it inside my update method up here separately, which is this code right here. But when it comes to the transform based movement, I did actually include the input inside this method here together with moving my player because there's no need to separate it because they're both going inside update. So just kind of like, you know, it's important to kind of know the differences here so you don't get jittery or choppy movement inside your game. So I thought it was really important to just kind of discuss this inside a separate lesson. I don't want you ending up spending hours looking on Google because you're for some reason getting weird movement inside your player. So just to kind of like explain the differences of what codes put in which places. So with that said, um, that's essentially what I wanted to tell you about in this episode, since we have talked about how to move your player using physics and also using the transform. I don't want to confuse you with anything. So just to clarify things, I think it's a good idea to, to sort of create this video here. So. With that said, I hope you enjoyed. I hope it wasn't too confusing and I'll see you guys in the next one.